Welcome to another session of the webinar. So today I'm going to show you how to build the suspension model and see the results comparison between the kinematic rigid body versus the kinematic compliance model. So let's go through this. So we're going to talk about what the stack objective. Um, so we're going to measure the camber caster to right height and the kingpin angle axis variation, which are the major uh, stack objectives for any suspension uh, model in automotive car. On top of that, we're going to see the, the kinematic behavior of the suspension, which is the pump steer. So we're going to see how your bump steer is going to affect between I mean, like the difference between the, the rigid body versus the complaint modeling. So for the non-automotive background users, just to go through it, what, what are these stacks or what are the measurements? Uh, the camber, which is like the inclination of the tire, when you view from the vehicle front and which is very much required for the camber thrust. So we're gonna measure that variation. And the toe, which is the leading edge of the tire, when it bends towards the inside of the vehicle, it's called toe in. And if it is out, it is called toe out, when you view from the top of the vehicle. And, and the caster is like, when you view from the vehicle side, the inclination of your ball joints and the line joining the ball joints and the angle between that line and the vertical line is called as the caster angle and we're going to see how it's going to vary um, in our model and the kingpin axis again the same line as that of the caster but we have to see that line from the front side of the vehicle and we measure from the vertical reference line and what is the kingpin um, or the steering axis angle. So we're going to see all these stack objectives in, in today's webinar. And, and this is just a summary of the you know, typical measurements that are done for suspension systems. Right. <clears throat> there could be a lot of measurements we can add it. Right. Because these, are, these are like the standard suspension right. measurements. And then the exciting part is uh, we are adding bump steer. Right. All right. So let's go ahead and and see how we are modeled it. Um, so the rigid body requires the variation analysis model and the mechanical uh, model. So we're gonna use both the modules for to build the rigid body. And when it comes to the compliance body modeling, we need on top of that VNMM, we need the compliant modeler, which, which includes the, the FEA. Um, the complaint modeling. So we need all three to build this model. So make sure the user have all these three modules to, you know, once we're done with the webinar, they can access the model and so they need it, all these modules. So this is the prerequisite to run the model. All right, so what I've done here is uh, just a brief, I have created the model variants where you could see the rigid static where we are going to assemble the parts um, at a set right height uh, similarly for the compliance static so we are going to compare these two rigid static versus the compliance static to understand the variations uh, of the measurements like camber caster and what's the difference between these two and then we are going to see how the compliance kinematic and rigid kinematic how your bump steer values are going to change with the compliance and we call the compliance which is just rigid body. So I'm going to apply the first one which is a rigid static which is like why we use the static because we are assembling the parts to a certain right height set right height so I have applied using the model variants and let's nominal build these parts and see how it deviates press deviate and see if you can see that the variations of all the parts are are accounted in this deviation and it shows how it's and this is including the 
and I think this one said leaving the tolerance, but you can't set right height perfectly. Right. Right. So you have a tolerance in there to represent the error when they're setting right height. Right. On the plan. Right. Yeah. Is that like material handling? Um, no, it's it's a tool. It's a tool, it's a tool. Right. A tool that they use. Rigid kind of uh, rigid body, um, and let's go to the variant. Um, right. So you can take this because it was built with mechanical joints. Right. You can just add a motion loop. Right. And now you can take do, this do. mechanical model, rigid body mechanical model, and run it through its motion. So that right. we could calculate bump steer. Bump steer. So that's the rigid kinematic Correct. to be in shot. Uh, let's look at that. This gets activator, which is rotate the upper control arm. And again, you see this nominal bill and then TVA. And you can see that the range of motion from jounce to rebound. So during this range of motion, if you look at the angle, which is the toe angle, uh, this keeps changing, right? That's that's what we call it as the, the bump steer. Right. So you didn't kind of you didn't go into depth, but bump steer is the toe angle changes the wheel goes to range right. of motion. Right. I'm going to show that now. That's pretty good. Really cool. Right. You know, so which is which? Um, every car driver doesn't like it. So I'm going to show that what happens. Uh, when there is a bump steer, when there is a bump on the roads and your you suspension. Go, you want to go to the... Uh, yeah, I'm going to show the... This is how your steering wheel... Right. Uh, right. When there's a bump, your steering wheel rotates, which is not desirable. <clears throat> so... Right, so if you're ever driving and you hit some potholes and you feel like you're losing control, it's because you got... Yeah, yeah this is... Bump steer. Yeah, this is one of the examples. If you see the how the driver is doing, it's just leaving this wheel and see how it's behaving, right? Yeah, that's what we call it as a bump steer.